love to use die cuts on your cards, but want to stretch how you use them and get more from them? Adding colour detail with your Copic markers, or any other alcohol markers, is a quick way to change up your regular die cuts from plain cardstock and make your card stand out. What's more, you can use layering floral dies such as a layered rose die from Walter New and use the layers independently to stretch your design. I'm Verity and welcome to my channel. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on my next video. The Alter New Layered Rose Die comes with three floral layers and three leaf layers, which you can layer up to have a bold coloured outline or only use two layers for a more freestyle look. However, to begin making this card, I'm using the Gradient Lines Cover Die from Alter New to create a dry embossed background. This is a technique I love, but often forget about. And after taking the easy die cutting technique class on Alter New Academy, I wanted to revisit it with this card. So tape your cover die to a piece of full cardstock by Lauren Vaughan and make sure it's cut down to the card panel size you're going to use. You need to run this through your die cutting machine with an embossing mat and the sandwich set up according to your machine for dry embossing. The embossing mat allows the die to press into the cardstock but does not give enough pressure to cut it and instead just leaves the embossed indentation. This gives a really lovely tone on tone texture for the background. To create the colour floral die cuts, I tape down the dies onto a piece of Nina Classic Crest Solar White 80 pound cardstock and I run this through the machine to cut the shapes out. I started off placing the die cut back into the negative to help colour it the shape in. However, I found in the end it was just as easy to colour the shape in without the negative piece and I just held it in place with my fingers instead. Start off by adding a layer of your lightest colour, so I used RV02. Next, add your mid-tone colour, which I used was RV06, and add this to the middle of the die cut, feathering your strokes outwards. Lastly, add your darkest tone, I used RV09, in the middle, and only feather this out slightly. To get a lovely blend on the die cut, you will want to go back with your mid-tone colour and blend out between your darker and your mid-tone colour and then repeat this with your lightest colour so you're blending between your mid-tone and your lighter colour. Although the outline die cut is quite delicate, it is still easy enough to colour it in in this method. I repeated this step with the second layer of the rose die which has some areas with more space so this allows you to add more colour and give you more areas to blend on. You may find it looks a bit messy to begin with when you're colouring these in, but when you start to blend out the colours, it can really look stunning. And in addition to these two, I also coloured another rose outline die cut, so on my finished card I'd have three florals. For the leaves, I used the same process as the florals, and I used YG95, YG97, YG99. These greens are more of a muted green, which really works well with the bold, bright pink of the florals and also ties in with the muted grey colour scheme of the background. When I was playing about with the layout of the card with the coloured die cuts, I really wanted the flowers to pop out more from the background. I found the best way to do this was to add the full layer die cut in white behind the coloured layer die cut. This allowed the florals to really stand out from the background. Gina K Connect Glue was great for applying small amounts of glue to the fine die cuts to then adhere down to this full layer die cut. However, I decided I didn't want to do this with the leaves as then the composition would look quite busy with a lot of white in it. So I kept those leaf die cuts more simple in their form. To add a bit more interest to the background, I used my Ganzai Tambi Starry Colours watercolour set and added some fine gold paint splatter. I used the yellow gold in the palette and this looks stunning on the fog cardstock. However, I was quite impatient and I didn't allow it to dry properly and therefore I smudged some of the paint splatter. I added a heat embossed sentiment from the Sketchy Floral Stamp Set. This was heat embossed on a black strip in metallic gold rich pale from Wow Embossing Powder. And this tied in beautifully with the gold paint splatter in the background. Also the black cardstock really allowed the sentiment to stand out from the bold coloured florals. 
So my original layout of the floral composition didn't really cover up the mistake that I made with the paint splatter. So I just rotated my layout and instead of having it positioned in the bottom right corner, I moved it to the top left corner. The elements were added to the card with varying depths of foam dimension using scrapbook adhesive foam pads to give more interest and depth to the card. Lastly, I added a few sequins from Trinity Stamps with Gina K Connect glue. These sequins are the Rock Candy Confetti mix. I loved creating this card. The easy die cutting technique class that I took for the Ultra New Educator Certificate Programme pushed me to create a card with more die cut elements than stamps and I loved how it turned out. I loved the colour combination and how the fog colour complements that modern pop of pink from the florals. This card was produced as part of my design teamwork for Bumbleberry Paper Crafts. It's an online UK EU stockist of American stamps and dies so make sure you go and check out Katrina's site. If you're not a subscriber already, why not click that button below along with the bell icon so you'll be notified when my next video is up. You may also like this other video too. I hope you enjoyed today's technique and until next time, happy crafting!